My name is Amy Morgan and I run our programming at the Winter Park Chamber. Very excited to bring our new programs to you virtually as we all are challenged to adapt to this current environment. I would like to introduce our president and CEO, Betsy Gardner Eckbert, who's going to speak today about how the Winter Park Chamber is adapting and how she challenges our community to adapt as well. Betsy, see you. Thank, thank you, Amy. And you know, Amy's just now doing the polling feature because she's become the queen of Zoom. And we pivoted her out of uh, some of her functionality into new functionality about 10 days ago. And she just continues to move from strength to strength as do uh, all of our team, and certainly Tiffany Cahill, who's on this call as our event manager as well. So I wanna thank our team for helping this get set up, and I wanna thank all of you for making time to jump on this call today, and hopefully what we offer you will be some inspiration. At the Chamber, we have four things that we're focused on um, doing as strategic priorities, and the first one is to deliver an excellent Chamber experience. And one of the things we try to do in delivering that is to be a role model in the business community in and of ourselves as the board of directors and staff. And so I can't tell you how proud I am of our staff for stepping up and doing the things that they needed to do to turn us into a vibrant functioning model for our business community as soon as possible. And I'm really privileged to have the chance to share some of what they've done here today. So we're gonna to talk today about how do you assess the current crisis that you're in? How do you think about pivoting to your own new business model? And how can you use something called the lean startup method to enable that new functionality that's required in a crisis? So very early on, um, someone sent me an article in the middle of all this that said, unfortunately, we are not in a blizzard. We thought that COVID-19 was a blizzard and a blizzard takes about a week to recover from. And it was time for us to all realize that we are moving into a winter and that it was going to be a long season and not a short traumatic event, but that a long um, stymieing event, much like winter is for parts of the world. And we now know that there'll even be some permafrost left behind as a result of the devastating consequences of this pandemic. We now have to, instead of work off of business plans that are well thought through that roll out to five years, just like driving in a blizzard, we can only work about 10 feet in front of us. And that's a really tough thing to do. The conclusion of this article said every company in the world as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic will now have to behave like a startup. So incumbent companies that have loads of brand recognition and decades of experience with their customers and lots of capital built up are now gonna have to behave like startup companies. The name of the game is that companies need to act quickly or they will get left behind. And that's the stark reality of where we are. I was really fortunate to be attached to two different startup organizations. The first one was in London, England, where I came on in the second year of growth for a startup consulting company that offered solutions to um, mentor senior women to get them ready for global roles. And then I ended up starting my own company from scratch with two partners. We created a luxury brand of swimwear that was sold in 14 countries worldwide. And you know, we need to be thinking about ourselves right now as startups and not just the kind of Bill Gates startup tech company from somebody's garage, but really thinking about what are the elements that go into the DNA of a startup company. They don't have very much capital and those who do have capital are using it right now to pay payroll or make other essential bills get paid. Um, there isn't sales forecasting ability. So, you know, I started looking at at working out our operating models last week and realized we have no way of knowing how to model the next three months, the next six months, the next nine months. And that's very much like what it would be for a startup company. There's no sales history, so there's no way to model going forward three or four quarters. Uh, and so we don't have that ability right now because we can't say what normal is. I have no idea what will happen in April is the same thing as what happened in the last two months of March. So we don't have that. I don't really have access to the kind of marketing tools and budget I had before because it's not prudent to just be spending right now. We do have limited resources and we're moving into an unknown environment. All of these are key features of working in a startup. And if you haven't done it before, it may be 
something that takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you can get in that mindset, becoming more entrepreneurial is something that we talk about at the chamber. Every size business can become more entrepreneurial. And we certainly challenge everyone to think about becoming more entrepreneurial right now. The great thing to learn from entrepreneurs is they really have nothing to lose. They're brand new into the market. They don't have market share. They don't have brand equity. And entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs themselves don't have job security. They could run out of money at any time and lose their job. So they really don't have anything left to lose. So they're able to think differently and take different kinds of risks that incumbent operators can take. And they end up being able to do some interesting things that can create opportunities that larger scale companies may not be able to do. So right now, conditions in the pandemic are making it hard to write, adhere to, or even amend a business plan. And the typical plan for a startup, a business plan for a startup is about five years long. And it's a forecast for income, cash flow, and profits. There's a terrific quote from Mike Tyson, and he's, of course, the famous boxer, and he said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And certainly, this pandemic is a giant punch in the mouth for anyone trying to operate a business right now. And so the question today is, how do we execute our business? How do we start to lead our business in a crisis? So when I was sitting in a board meeting Two and a half weeks ago, I was fortunate to have people on our board from both Advent Health and Orlando Health who are a little bit further along in understanding the severity of this crisis than the rest of us, who said, Betsy, you have to close the building and you have to do it as soon as possible. We were receiving guests from all over the world three weeks ago, some of whom might have been carrying the COVID-19 virus with them, and they were exposing a clear and present risk to our team and the other guests in our building. And so I remember at that meeting, um, someone joked that my face turned three shades whiter, but the first thing that came to my mind is, how am I going to pay my employees if they no longer do customer facing, physically present roles like some of them did? And it concerned me, and so I put my energies into my first order of business, which was to take care of my staff. And I always use the golden rule in everything that I do. And I thought about how I would want to be communicated with and taken care of if I were on a team at this moment. And so we worked quickly to authorize um, paid time off that we were going to advance our employees so that they had available to them in case their roles didn't translate into other cross functions once we became a stay at home team. We had never done this before. I didn't know what being a stay at home team was gonna look like for us. And so we advanced our team PTO and said, here's two weeks of PTO. Uh, you can take it, but you owe it to us on the back end over 12 months. And if you leave our organization, you have to pay us the cash value for it. So I felt like we had made a good interim step, step to take care of our employees. And then it became really clear to me that we had enormous needs in our business community that began to emerge very early on and that we were gonna to have to cross train and start cross working our people in different roles and functionalities to meet the needs that were emerging that were very different from the needs of our day-to-day -day chamber operation. So we started putting people into different roles and we've actually given people different titles since we've started this journey uh, almost two and a half weeks ago. Everything that we did, we started out with our mission. And one of the things going back to the blizzard and winter article that I keep referencing was that many of us use a slide deck to talk about our organization. We go around town discussing what our mission is and how we do things. But um, much of the deck has other strategic priorities in there that are unique to this year. In that article, they said you can throw away everything from the deck except for the first slide, which is usually your mission slide. And that was a concise way of saying, get back to understanding why you exist, align what you need to do with why you exist, and start to create meaningful ways to engage with your customer base, uh, or for us, it's our community and member base, so that we can be in alignment with that mission, but create new value points for that constituent base in the midst of this crisis. So our mission, as many of you know, is to convene people and ideas for the benefit of our businesses and our community. And we started really struggling, I started really struggling early on with our job is to generate a crowd 
Our job is to put a lot of people in our building or put a lot of people at an event. Our job is to teach. Our job is to bring people together. And we're now sitting in a reality where we need to be at least six feet apart. And it seems like every day, the number of people we're allowed to be congregating with is getting smaller and smaller. How in the world do we deliver on our chamber mission of convening people uh, virtually? I'm really grateful because we had already started doing some virtual programming through Facebook Live, and we had a team that was really ready to think differently about creating a chamber engagement model. A lot of chambers function on the basis of events and people showing up at events, and we were fortunate in that our team already started thinking differently about how do we engage with people through a digital newsletter, through a social media post, through a Facebook Live experience, and we had built that out, and I'm grateful to our board, who three years ago allowed us to change our mission statement to reflect this idea of digital convention. So we had the team in place to start thinking differently about our mission, and we knew that we had to take that a step further. So we started thinking about how do we create the heart and soul of our mission on a stay-at-home order? Things went from a bit bad to worse. So staying mission aligned, it became clear to me that I had four key chapters of work to do as the leader of our organization. And I try to focus on these four key chapters and do something in one of those chapters every day, knowing that there's so much in front of me to do that my head could explode each and every day trying to do it all. But I try to focus on my four key priorities in these chapters, and I try to do what I can do that day on each one of these chapters. And they're as follows. Keep making payroll. If you're making payroll right now, congratulations. Please keep doing it. It's the right thing. It's the best thing for our economy, and you may be rewarded for it later. As we begin to understand more and more about the CARES Act, there may be loan forgiveness for people who keep their employees. We have some information coming out about that tomorrow, and two webinars this week that will have more information about that for our employers. So we want you to stay tuned on that but keep making payroll as long as you can. And if you haven't found a way to keep making payroll, make sure that you log on to our website and check our daily briefings for information about how to get a Florida emergency bridge loan to keep making payroll. So my number one priority is to keep making payroll. My number two priority is to motivate our community to access capital so that they can keep making payroll. If you notice in our communications, we talk every day about accessing capital because it's important to our local economy for people to keep making payroll by accessing capital for some at the moment. Our third priority will emerge and grow more acute in the coming days. And that is, as a Chamber of Commerce, to make sure that we are accessing resources to enable people in our community to have somewhere to live and something to eat. This crisis will grow a bit deeper in the coming days, and we need to be focused on how we can be part of those solutions. And then my fourth chapter that I have to focus on every single day is that we will rebuild the business community in Winter Park stronger than ever. So knowing that those are my four key things and that my team was now safe, I thought, how can we deliver on our mission virtually? We have to become a lean startup. And what is a lean startup? A startup is often something people think about, a Silicon Valley pair of guys kicking off something in their garage and it's usually tech fo focused. But it's a definition laid out by a guy called Eric Ries who coined the term to describe this, a lean startup is an institution designed to create a new product or service under conditions of extreme uncertainty. And that's my college-age son in the background. Wave hi, hate. <laughs> Going through um, my webinar, this is the conditions of extreme uncertainty that we're in. In other words, in lean startup terms, a startup is a group of people working on a risky new product, even if that group of people works for a large company or a large organization. So I'll give you some names of organizations that have adopted the Lean Startup concept. And Lean Startup is now taught in MBA programs as accepted pedagogy for excellent best practice in business. So these are some of the institutions that use Lean Startup now. The US Marine Corps, Exxon, Qualcomm, Intuit, and GE. These are examples of companies that have found this a very profitable way for them to think about how to solve their business problems, especially in an era of extreme uncertainty. So the Lean Startup is essentially focused on doing two key things. Number one, 
is creating what's called the minimum viable product. And number two is focus on pivoting. So instead of sitting with a room of researchers and people doing endless amounts of research on how to get the perfect prototype and that we focus group it and we wait months and months and months and go through a stealth period to get something out, we create instead the minimum viable product. Many of you know that when Apple release a phone, they know that they have to release an upgrade to it um, or, or a, um, an update to the software within a week of its release. They know that they don't have everything ready to go perfectly, but they release it anyway. And that's a practice of releasing the minimum viable product and they present an upgrade in a few days or a week's time. In fact, I talked about this philosophy with my son and he said, oh mom, video game teams come in the day after release release and they have to work around the clock because they anticipate all the bugs and they have to upgrade them. So tech companies are releasing the minimum viable product all the time. The second piece of this is the pivot. And it's a really important piece of it because it takes a culture that's ready to test and look at things and change things in real time based on customer feedback. It used to be that customer feedback was very hard to acquire. You had to have a cup of coffee with someone and talk about the product. It was a very lengthy process. Bring focus groups in to sit down and hear about things. Now we can get customer feedback in real time. Case in point, many of you answered our poll at the beginning of this webinar and you gave us customer feedback at the very beginning of the poll. Today we sent out a survey to understand the pain points in our business community and we have over 10% of our membership, which is a very, very high response rate for a survey, have already responded to our survey to give us data and we sent that out, I believe, at noon. So here we are four hours later with a significant data set that we can take to our city government and say, these are the things we need to partner with you on to help solve the problems of the business community. So data is highly efficient. It's all around us. It's easy to get. And it's what enables the pivot and the real-time iterative process that allows you to release the minimum viable product and then improve it with each iteration. So startups are not just smaller versions of big companies. They actually have a different DNA from a big company. Big companies are very top heavy. They're very legal driven. There's a whole bunch of bureaucratic layers. There's an appetite to get everything as risk proof as possible before it's released. And existing companies execute very tightly to a business model. Startup companies look for a business model. And a case in point is Google. When Google launched, no one really knew they were gonna become the giant ad revenue behemoth that they are today. But they looked for that business model as they moved through their incumbency as a search engine and they found new ways to add value and they created new business models as they went on. So we want you to think about how you can create this minimum viable product and then how you can look for a new business model as you release it and test it and iterate it to make it better each time. So for us, we're really fortunate at the Chamber of Commerce because we have a team that values nimbleness and values learning. So the key elements that you need to have in your culture to function like a lean startup uh, are collaboration, meaning excellent teamwork, nimbleness, and then speed. Many of you know that we do 110 events and programs a year through the Chamber of Commerce, and if you've taken any of them, you know that we survey everything that we do. And on Monday morning, we have a ritual at our staff meeting of going through our surveys. And it's interesting because one of my peers asked me once, don't people feel embarrassed if there's something on the survey that's negative? And I'm extremely proud of our team and our culture because there's such an appetite to improve in our culture that we're almost excited to hear something that we can improve instead of high praise all the time because we know what that next frontier for improvement is and where we can go. We've created a culture of learning. We've created a culture of iteration and we've created a culture of nimbleness. Now, because we did all that for three years, we were able to supercharge it when we had to during this crisis. But essentially, what we did was we performed the functions of a lean startup. We found a business idea. We said, okay, we can't do any of the programming or events that we've got planned, maybe for as long as three to six months. So what is it that our business community needs right now? Well, number one, they need leadership. 
We need to provide visible, accessible leadership to our business community. Number two, we've got to provide them information. And the information